up everyone? This is James Patrick from Slam Academy. I'm excited to show you how I use the new Ableton Live 10 Wavetable synth in this track. Let's check it out really quick. I got just a nice sub bass in here. But what I can do with this now I can first of all realize that this is just a couple of oscillators here going through a couple of filters and then finally being modulated by a couple of envelopes and a couple of LFOs. There's some unison treats over here to layer the sounds on top in the end if you want to add multiple iterations and then some voice count global controls. All these things are standard things you would expect in any synthesizer. We even have a sub-octave oscillator, which we don't need right now because we're already way down there. But three oscillators, two filters, and some modulation. Standard stuff. The thing that's kind of special about it, well, very special, is the fact that it's a wavetable synthesizer. So what that means is that instead of simple periodic waveforms like sine, triangle, square, and saw, we have a whole collection of tables. What tables are is they're combinations of many different waveforms that we can morph through with the global kind of wavetable morph control. So watch if I grab a waveform that's maybe a little more interesting. I can morph it. Don't like that table, try other ones with the arrows. Right? So the idea of wavetable synthesis is that these are all meticulously programmed collections of oscillator waves. Every individual one in, this, in each category um, is a whole variety of different waveforms that you can dynamically morph through. So you're not even actually crossfading through the waves. You're actually recalculating the, the waveform as it's being generated, like a kind of algorithmic function generator, dare I say. This is a cool one with some neat overtones. Let's go ahead and add some sub bass to that at an octave below. It'll be a nice sine wave. Here's our volume. See that guy? We can even add some overtones to that if we wanted. Cool, huh? So now we have a nice big rich waveform and in a subtractive sense, as if we were using like a Moog synth, the next thing we would do is we'd grab our filter. So, so that's kind of a standard thing and we kind of would start making like a Moog style bass sound or whatever. But instead, let's really focus on getting the most out of the oscillator wavetable engine itself. What I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the sub-octave oscillator off so we can hear it by itself. And I'm going to pull this slider down about right in the middle somewhere. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually even turn my filters off so there's no coloration from the filter section. And I'm going to go over to my mod matrix. And I'm going to go to oscillator 1 position and I'm going to give it some modulation here, maybe about 50%. So that's out of 100 and I'm right in the middle here somewhere. Now I can just go right to my mod sources and go to LFO1, and let's go ahead and set this thing up to be nice and slow. Now when I play a note, oh, derp. LFO1, oscillator one position, go ahead. So slow, I fooled myself. So now when I play a note, set the rate here to taste. Nice, huh? Let's even start it lower. Have it a little faster, huh? Let's give it even more depth. Now what we can do is we can start playing through these tables to get a feel for what kind of options are available. I'm just going to start hitting next in the basics collection.
and swatch our overtones and our waveform and our spectral content move around as we, in this case, sync up that quad saw wave. Those are fun, huh? So I wasn't even like halfway through the list there. Let's move on to the next category. Amber. So now we're just getting started again. Now we're only about a fourth of the way through this next list. They keep going. And I'm going to save these for you for when you get a chance to get the instrument and play around with it on your own. But meanwhile, I'll take a look at this. In addition to having this cool wavetable morph control, for those of you who use wavetable synthesizers already, like Serum or Massive or Yuhi Zebra, I love those things. You might be asking, where's the second control? Where's that intensity knob from Massive, or where's the warp knob from Serum? That's this whole second section down here. Let's take a little closer look. You'll notice now, they're all grayed out until I choose a, a warp setting. This is like algorithmic distortion now. <clears throat> we have three different categories. FM allows, to, allows us to apply FM, or frequency modulation, which is um, like audio rate vibrato, which is detuned from a modulation source through these variety of controls. So if I turn up amount, I'll be giving this some FM. And now I can detune that FM modulator right here. It's pretty intense. Let's back off that amount. This is where holding shift can be nice for fine tuning. Nice, huh? So bipolar controls there too, that's pretty fun. Double click on anything in Live 10 now to zero it back out. So we can detune our add amounts from our FM. Let's keep moving one and see what else we have in our algorithmic distortion or warp settings here. Here's the classic ones. Now these are um, summoned from analog circuit designs. Pulse width modulation is a classic analog thing we can do. By the way, you'll notice as I'm playing with this, whatever I touch last becomes the target here. So I can go ahead and say, sure, add a little LFO to that too. Whoa. So sync also will go ahead and basically phase lock this oscillator wave now to a inaudible clock master. And now this sync is like a detune for the clock master. In other words, you're turning up the frequency or repetition rate of the fundamental pitch. It's kind of a cool old analog way to, especially when you apply a pitch envelope to it, get some really cool, cool lead sounds. So. We're in a really fun kind of territory now where we're exploring all sorts of cool overtones. And don't forget, you can just go ahead and add your sub octave. Right? And add your filter. At any time. Pretty amazing, huh? Keep that filter off for now before we get into that section. Whenever I'm learning a new synthesis language, I really try and focus on the part of it that's unique. Like if I'm learning FM synthesis, I just use sine waves and just use the modulation matrix and stay away from filters and classic things because I want to push myself to make new sounds. This wavetable language through a combination of these distortion algorithms, these warp modes, I should say, and this wavetable morph control gives you the ability to really, this playground is a whole new uh, place to work. Um, you know, not that wavetable synthesis is new, but wavetable synthesis has never been quite so easy. Even within Serum, it's a little more tricky and, and honestly not quite as fun sometimes. So look at here's a warp mode. Notice our modulation target reset itself because we flipped our mode over here. So I'm going to actually double click to wipe that out. This is warp now. These are our kind of more modern 21st century wavetable tweaks. So warp fold you might recognize this as like a mirror mode or fold mode from serum and let's go ahead and apply a new lfo to that one now i go to lfo2 
amazing, huh? Let's uh, back off on the depth of that just a touch. It was a little nerdy. Wow, huh? So that's how I like to work wavetable synthesis. I like to tickle the overtones and make the harmonics and upper register stuff really dance through destroying a bunch of higher register content, fast moving wave content, and then add the note content. In other words, really let the pitch become of the notes you're playing become more clear with a really simple, more fundamental waveform as the sub oscillator. That's going to make your, your whole combination of content modulate the wavetable position, modulate the warp stuff. That's where the real fun playground is. Now, when it's time to put the sound into the mix with other sounds, that's where I really like to use the filter. Now, the filter inside of wavetable offers some cool functions. Let's go ahead and play this in the mix again. And we're going to notice it's way too unwieldy to fit in the pocket. And then we're going to use the filter section to really get some fun action out of it. So that's cool, but it's like, um, what is somebody attacking me with like a pitchfork? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on the low pass filter and pull the cutoff down a little, give it a little resonance boost just for a little extra energy there at the cutoff. And I'm going to explore what I'm looking for. So somewhere in there, like in the mid range move, but what I want to do is I want to actually add one of our great analog synthesizer distortion algorithms from live 9.5 for the low pass filter in the synth case i really love just the prodigy filter it's basically the moog ladder filter go ahead and drive it gotta watch out when you start adding gain here oftentimes you have to go to the main outs and turn them down a little bit because we'll start going into the reds watch when we add just a subtle bit of motion to that filter cutoff i'm going to go to Touch my cutoff control, it snaps to the bottom here, and I'm gonna take this slower LFO. How's that? So now my tone is moving along with my uh, modulation to my filter, uh, to my table position. Let's say that works. So now we have a choice when we add our second filter now, if we want. We could go with like a high pass filter to squeeze it into the mix a little more. Like, that's cool. Or, I mean, maybe this is our kind of wobble LFO. So we did the first one to add our timbre and to do our kind of mix and sound design stuff. And this can be our modulation target, our really like active modulation tool. So I'm gonna go way low on this. I'm gonna go ahead and give this, I don't know, a different filtered model. Just a little bit. Now I'm in this deep bass zone. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab it an envelope. I'm going to modulate the filter cutoff, but when I go to the mod source, I'm going to go to end that envelope one, and I'll sure here's my envelope. And that's cool, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to loop it. So just like in FM synthesis, to mention that again, uh, looping envelopes is another way to make a complex LFO. So what this does is it gets rid of the sustain time and just loops the time functions. <laughs> this gets to be pretty rugged uh, so but you're working this instrument hard at this point we've got two filters we've got analog distortion algorithms on both plus warping and modulation to the table here all being controlled by this through the matrix pretty tight huh wow this is just a really amazing instrument i can't get enough of it um once we get it all dialed in the way we like it um a really common thing to do now is to um, tweak the time and amount of overall modulation. This is actually a really fun thing to go ahead and automate. So it might be uh, common to say show automation and then unlink this and go ahead and make it like a 16 bar envelope. And now we have a little bit of programmability to that parameter over time. So 
now this thing's kind of like chilling. And then when we want to have some little growlitude, we can go ahead and tweak that. And we can start using some fun. Right, so now we're sequencing the overall modulation matrix amount. And if that's not quite fun enough, don't forget about our unison. Now, classic analog unison is just duplicating voices and detuning them. That's classic. Not super common for sub bassy patches. So I'm gonna actually break this automation and give myself some overtones so I can really hear that modulation. So now we're hearing three different synth patches or five, you know, it's, it's kind of, let's let those overtones ring. So that's classic unison, but watch when we try these other modes, these are more like summoning some of the exciting unison functions that are available in other popular wavetable synthesizer VSTs right now. For instance, choosing a different wavetable spread for every note, especially if you're playing chords, this can be insane. So you get a different wavetable position spread, otherwise random positions per note. These can all be really fun things to get at energy. Some serious film scoring stuff going on in that shimmer model. Let's check out position spread. It's a pretty much a chorusing effect when you're dealing with this thick of a patch, but check out that unison for thickening things up. And don't forget when you're all done with your patch, say um, table warp lead bass or whatever kind of uh, patch you're kind of trying to name this and even better yet go ahead and group that into an instrument rack and live and put your favorite functions onto the macros you know this is how you're really going to bang this thing up and make some really cool results happen especially if you have a push nearby you know So yeah, this has been James Patrick at Slam Academy, and I'm really glad that we're hanging out. Um, we have classes all the time on the internet, uh, so no matter where you live, as long as you have an internet connection, there are no corners left unturned. So join us, make some music with us at slamacademy.com. See you there.